Yo gamer name here welcome to my Lars Alexanderson punishment guide where I explain the punishment options that you are going to be using when playing Lars. Now as usual I will make this guide for all levels beginner to high level so I'll try by all means to avoid the use of frame data to not chase the beginners away whilst at the same time trying to make sense to high level players as well. I do think it will be easier for high level players to understand rather than beginners so by all means I'll try my best to avoid the use of frame data but as a beginner you might learn a thing or two as well about frame data in this video. Now I won't just show you how to punish with Lars, I'll show you guys also what to do after set punishments, the options you have in terms of like frame traps and like flow charts. You land a punish, so what do you do after? So that's what differentiates my punishment guides from most guides out there. So again, the video might be long, so please, please check out the timestamps, watch at your own speed, at your own pace, rewind, pause if you have to, just make sure you try your best to understand what I'm trying to say. If you want a, a good definition on what punishment is, check out this Leroy guide, the specific timestamp, I'll link, I'll put the link to the video in the description but don't worry i will make a separate punishment guide for taking eight so look forward to that so without further ado my boys let's get right into it okay so for his fastest punish which can also be described as his 10 frame punish at high level lars has his new 2-1 which is an amazing punish like any character with a 10 frame high mid move like it's a very strong move right people can't duck it because it has a mid and it's safe as well on block so Moves like these can be used as a punishment check. So what I mean by that is sometimes you want to be sure on whether a move is punishable or safe, right? So it's a good way to check if something is punishable. You first figure out, okay, is it punishable? You throw this out as your first, as your fastest punisher, right? So it's a very, very good check. It being safe as well. So just check it out. You'll be like, oh, okay, it's punishable. But how punishable is it? And that's when we keep going with other lives, other punishers. But as for now, we're looking at his two, one. So like I said, uh, different moves in Tekken are punishable, are riskier than others, right? If it's not safe, it's risky, but like in different aspects, right? It might be risky to the point that you can launch it, or you can just have a jab punish on it. When I say jab punish, usually when people say jab punish, they mean it's not launch punishable, and it's only like 10 frame punishable, or like can only be punished by the fastest punisher of your character. In Lars's case, 2, 1, right? So, as a new player, it's up to you to figure out which moves are safe and which moves are unsafe. And figuring out how unsafe certain moves are is very, very important and it differentiates a good player from a great player. But as for now, looking at Lars's fastest punish, you can check punishment or to see if something is punishable with 2 1. And being Lars's fastest punish, any move that is regarded as unsafe while standing can be punished by Lars is 2 1. This is basically his fastest punish. Something basic. I'll let you code Lars to do his um, arc blast. Alright. So this move is minus 13. So what I mean by that is it's jab punishable, right? So you can get this, right? You can get 2 1 if you want, which is good enough, right? We'll talk about his later punishment. Going forward is more optimal punishment, but as a start, you can be using 2 1 as a decent punisher. So now as you see, 2-1, he does this spin, right? This little dance, right? So if you're not familiar, this is a stance. Lars goes into limited, in, limited entry stance, right? So 2-1 into LE is one of his strongest options. It's very, very strong. So you can go like 2-1 into limited entry. Um, limited, uh, limited entry has two moves, sorry. So it has a 1, which is a low, and it has a mid, right? The mid is safe and the low is jab punishable so not that punishable right so you have a you have a pure 50 50 mix up from this poke so you get a punish boom your opponent is now in a guessing situation between the mid and the low so you can see why Lars is fast as punish or his 10 frame punisher is really really strong in this game you can even cancel the stance so you can stay in full crouch you can do stuff like go for an orbiter if you want right you can cancel into more laws Comes into outstanding mids, right? Into other laws. Like you can do so much. You can do so much, right? So this is just the basic principle of how you can use 2 1, which is Lars's 10 frame or his fastest punish. Alright, so now for his 12 frame punisher or his second fastest punisher, we look at forward to 4. 
as you can see already it's a way better punisher than his 2-1 because firstly it does more damage at 32 whilst 2 1 only does 22 damage secondly it knocks down as well so already it's way better although it's up to you to decide whether you want to stay in you want to do 2 1 and go into stance right or if you want forward to 4 which knocks down and does more damage giving you some good okay situations so now again explaining on how certain moves are more punishable than others Let's record last to do his Arc Blast again. So, 4 run plus 2. Right? So, like I said, I said it was minus 13 at high level. So, if it's that case, you can still get 2-1. But you can still also get forward 2-4, as you can see. Right? So, like I said, 2-1 is his fastest punisher. So, this one will land on any move that is regarded as unsafe. A standard move regarded as unsafe, you're always going to land 2-1. But any move that's regarded as minus 10 or like jab punishable, you won't be able to land forward to 4. Right? But in a scenario where you can land forward to 4, right? You can always land to 1. In a scenario where you can only land to 1, you won't be able to land forward to 4. I hope that makes sense, right? To 1 is faster than forward to 4, right? So in a case where you can land forward to 4, you can always land to 1. But you landing for 2 4 over 2 1 in a situation where you can land both, right? It's always good to go for the most optimal punish, which in this case is forward 2 1. But now you always want to be perfect to the point that you always land the forward 2 1. So you forward 2 4, right? Sometimes, you know, in the, in, the, in the midst of a match, right? Things are moving fast, things are intense. Sometimes getting any punish. Is better than no punch at all so don't feel bad in a case where you learn you only get to one right punishing a move that's like super punishable in a case where you can also get forward to four you only get to one like don't feel bad because like any punish is better than no punish at all so yeah that's the best thing to do guys but like i said it's always good to be optimal so going forward to four is really really strong forward to four also was plus by the way so war right so it makes it a pretty, pretty strong punisher, as you can see. So at the war, if something is minus 12, or like relatively punishable, it's always good to know your 424 punish, or be ready with 424 punish. So now 424, as you've seen, it knocks down. So this gives Lars some pretty, pretty good Oki situations. Uh, so Oki basically means off the ground stuff, right? So for example, um, I do 4 to 4, so what are some good follow-ups I can do after this, right? After you get this punish, like, what can I do? So, one of Laz's strongest things about his Okizeme is his, his dynamic entry 2, right? This thing is going to hit grounded, so let me just show you guys. Um, let's see, da, 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 not set, right? And then this will be side draw left, right? So, if I knock down, as you can see, they are rolling on the ground, right? So, if I do DE2, it will flip them over, right? So it will hit them on the ground. It will also hit them when they try to do a spring kick, for example. Right? I get a launcher. It will hit them as counter hit. It will try to press a button, a recovery kick. Sorry, not recovery kick. Recovery, recovery kick will actually interrupt them. Will interrupt you. So it's in this situation, a better off trying to bait them, as you can see. Right? It's a very, very risky option. And honestly, most people won't do this because of how risky it is. But stuff like a wake-up law, for example, this is very common, right? That move, right? So you can get a counter hit from this, as you can see. And it also launches, right? So pretty good. Uh, this applies for the mid-kick as well, right? The mid-kick, that one. You do the punish, then go for the okay situation, DE2. So like DE2 is his bread and butter when it comes to Okizeme. Like honestly... Whenever your opponent is on the ground, you always you always check them first with DE2, right? So now, if they start respecting you or getting up immediately, now is your chance, right, to like go for his mix-ups, his stance mix-ups. So you can go for laws like this, right? Um, his other law, which is DE3 plus 4, right? You can go for the mid, so go into plus, into SE, or if you want, you can cancel into SE, SE mix-ups, right? Yeah, so his Oki is pretty strong in Ticket 8, right? So, 4 to 4, as you can see, is a very good punish. 
Overall, one of the best punishers in the game, gives you good damage, knocks down and insane OK situations as well. Okay, so after forward 2-4, his next punisher is his shoulder. So this is 13 frames, forward 2-4 is 12 frames, right? So it's slower than forward 2-4, you know, but it's a very good punisher at 13 frames because again, in a scenario where something is minus 13, you can get all of these, you can get 2-1, you can get four, forward four, forward to four, and you can also get the shoulder. So the shoulder is, let me say, this is more used as a wall combo, right? Because at the end of the day, forward to four does more damage, right? They both knock down and they do more damage, right? This does 28, this does 32, but they all knock down, right? And in a case where you get this, you can always get this as well, right? So I don't see the need to throw out the shoulder as a punish when you have forward to four, which is better in every single way possible. So the shoulder should only be used as a wall combo, but you can, I mean, you can use it, it's there as a punish for you, but 424 is stronger, so I don't advise it, right? 424 is optimal, gives you more OK and better options, and again, has more damage. Okay, so now for his next punish, let's talk about Lars's Blue Bolt, which is a 14 frame punisher at high level. So when I say a 14 frame punisher for beginners, what I mean by Sometimes at 14 frames, characters might be given a launcher, right? Like this is only given to like a few characters. So in the game, there are very few characters that actually launch people at 14 frames. And Lars is that exception. He's one of those characters. So yeah, having the ability to have a 14 frame launcher is like a very good privilege. Yeah, and our boy gets that shit. Like it's a very strong punisher. As you can see, it, it knocks down. I mean, it launches and gives you a... Like it's... It's really good. So this is something basic. Oh no, screw. Let's try that again, right? Uh, just something basic. Something basic. Right? Uh, 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 uh. So 83. Right? That's not even optimal, right? So he gets a launcher, right? Which is pretty, pretty good. Pretty, pretty good, if I do say so myself. So now, if something is considered to be launch punishable, so guys, again, remember in Tekken, there are moves that are more riskier than others. Something might be considered as jab punishable, that means it can't be launched. In like the basic terms, avoiding frame data. If something is regarded as jab punishable, it can't be launched. If something is considered as launch punishable, then it can be launched. So for every move considered launch punishable when standing, this is standing punishment, right? Anything considered as launch punishable when standing, that means Lars can launch it with this move. Now, the input is forward back to one. Yet you have to be very, very woke and ready to use this, right? So you have to be very knowledgeable on how punishable something is because, as you can see, on block, it's launch punishable on its own. Let me just show you guys. Uh, so let Lars also do this move, right? Blue Bolt. Amazing Blue Bolt. Yo, shout out, Tekken 6, man. The OG, right? As you can see, it says punish, right? So I can launch it on block. So it's launch punishable. So if you miss this punish, you're getting launched for it, right? You're getting launched. So it has to be a hard read, right? So yeah, it's just basically a launcher, guys. That's it's like it's easy to explain. It gives you a big combo. And again, you have to be knowledgeable on how punishable certain moves are. Because again, again, in this game, moves that are launched punishable at 14 frames, right? Can only be launched by certain characters. Not everyone has a 14 frame launcher. It's only a very few select characters that have this launcher and Lars being one of them. So you have to be knowledgeable on what is considered as minus 14 or like launch punishable at the least, right? At the worst, it's everyone can launch it, right? But at the least, few characters can launch it. 14 frame launchers, right? So yeah, Lars is one of those characters and yeah, it's a very good punish, very good range, very good damage as well. Okay, so for another of his launchers, we have Arc Blast. So this will launch anything 15 frames, so anything considered launch punishable at worst, meaning every character with a 15 frame launcher can launch it. So if something is minus 15, right? Arc Blast will work and Blue Bolt will work as well, because remember, Blue Bolt is 14 frames. So 15 frames, 14 frames is faster than 15 frames, right? So something is considered as 15 frame launch punishable, both of these will work, right? But if something is considered as 14 frames launch punishable, only Blue Bot will work, Arc Blast will not work because it's 15 frames. 
beginners please 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 just try to understand this i know it seems complicated but like the more you think about it the more it makes sense blue bolt is faster than arc blast okay let me show you guys something okay so quick select uh let's let's get jack up in this bitch okay uh jack seven or is jack eight jack eight jack 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 why are you at jack all right <clears throat> okay so jack's down forward two is minus 14 on block right so meaning lars should be able to launch it so uh uh record this this move right it's minus 14 on block if i then change from taken seven yeah it's still the same okay so as you can see from here it says spanish right my little blue box the text in yellow there it says spanish as you can see so lars can launch this so let me just i forgot to block i need to block with jack as well okay so block right <clears throat> right to slow right so lars can launch that as you can see it's a punish however if i do arc blast jack blocks it right because it's not 15 frame launch punishable it's only 14 frame launch punishable so that's the difference between 14 frames and 15 frames so something else like this for example let's see what's launch punishable that jack has um hmm. let's see this this has so much pushback right let's see uh yeah, it has so much pushback so much pushback uh, okay let's, let's try another character i don't really know jack that well so let's get um let's get Jin. okay let's get Jin, and we'll do kan kan right <clears throat> uh, sorry about that guys my jack knowledge is kind of cheeks Okay, let's get Jin to, to do his can can, his special can can, right? This move. Okay. Then I'll get him to block afterwards. I always forget to block, block. Okay, there we go. Nice. Alright, so in Jin's case, I'll do both, right? This one says punish. This one says punish as well. So as you can see from the frame detail, this is minus what? Minus 19. So it's a hella launch punishable. Meaning you can get both, right? Arc blast and blue bolt right but in the case of jack remember i could only get one of the launchers that last could do which was blue bolt because the move that jack did was only minus 14 meaning i could only get the forward back forward uh, forward back one to launcher which is the blue ball so that's the difference between a 15 frame launcher and a 14 frame launcher so again arc blast will launch anything above uh, 15 frames so minus 16 minus minus 17 minus 18 minus 19 you should be able to get this but minus 14 minus 13 going down you can only get this right only minus 14 sorry you can only get this minus 13 you can only get this and this right minus 10 you can only get this that's how punishment works in the general I, I always try to like repeat myself try to be a bit of repetition i know it's annoying for top level players but like dude I, my, my beginners boys i got you i got you you understand right just try your best to understand it's not that complicated so again 15 frame launcher is arc blast gives you a very good combo of course Lars has like super super insane combo damage in this game 75 damage from a launcher which is pretty pretty good okay so now from his launcher we'll skip all the way from 15 to 217 and talk about his long range punisher because he does have more you know 15 frame punishers he has down back to one he has back to four back to three but like you'd rather use this because it launches so i won't talk about his others but i'll talk about them in the with punishment section so don't you worry so he's back three four this is his long range punisher for moves that have like hella pushback so for example uh pause death is right this move right as you can see it has so much pushback right so the frame leader says it's minus 17 so ideally you should be able to get a launcher off of this right you should be able to get this right but of because of the pushback it makes it difficult to punish so in that case you go for your long range punisher which in last case is back three four as simple as that right so most moves in this game that have pushback are like super super punishable right it's minus 19 minus 18 so again, to avoid frame data, meaning it has pushback. If it has pushback and it looks like very strong, it most likely is punishable. But again, you have to know. 
there are some moves like Gene Ford forward two that have an insane pushback of their safe, right? Busted ass moves, but moves like post death fist, right? And Jack back one plus two. They have huge pushback, but they're unsafe. So in that scenario, you will be able to get back three four with Lars. Now for like in terms of like Oki situations, you can get something similar to what we discussed in the forward two four section, right? Stuff like this, right? To go for the law. But the distance was nerfed in this game. As you can see, if they get up with back, all these options will whiff, right? Right. So if they get up with back a lot, what you want to do is go into silent entry, right? Like this, right? And enforce the SE mix-ups. Right, so it's up to you to make the read. Are they going to get up with up or back? Are they going to, to, to kick on the ground or to you know low poke on the ground? So yeah, it's, it's about reading, guys. Go low if you want, right? If they press button, this will still work and launch them. So let me just show you guys again. Sorry. Uh, offense. Uh, let's say not set and this will be wake up mint kick. If they press buttons, you still get a launcher, right? As you can see. But again, if you decide to get up which is safer, you just have to go for the salary entry mix-ups. Okay. Yeah, that's basically back 3-4 explained. It's very easy, long range punisher, and that's all you need. Now for his wow standing punishment. So everything I've said about his standing punishment basically works the same as his wow standing punishment. You have the fastest move, which is wow standing 4. Then you have the slowest move, which is wow standing 1, being his launcher. So in a scenario where you get wow standing 1, you always get his other punishment, which is wow standing 2-1, wow standing 2-3, sorry. And off standing four as well. But in a scenario where you can only get off standing four, you won't be able to get off standing two, three, and off standing one as well. So the, the, the principle is the same with the punishment, right? So this will just be one section. So off standing four, like I said, is his, punish, is his fastest off standing punisher at 11 frames, right? So you just, this is a generic punish for less risky law. So like a jab punishable law, right, means it's not risky or like not that risky. So in last case, you only get this, which is pretty basic, right? Not that much damage, only like 16 damage. The frame data is good, right? That's the best thing about this Punisher is the frame data. So what's really, what's really good about this Punisher is, like I said, the advantage you get after landing the hit. So you can go for stuff like down back to one on hit, right? This is a frame trap, meaning if you land the four, they can't interrupt this, right? So it's a very good flow chart. It's a very good check. If you're disrespecting your frames, right? You can get a down forward one if you want, another check. You can get a back one, right? The right to side step. It's also a frame trap, meaning they have to respect it if they interrupt you. They can't disrespect you, sorry, because you know it's, it's a frame trap, like I said. Right? So pretty good. Uh, you can get back to four, back to three. I don't advise it because it's a mid a mid high. Right? So just back two if you want. Right. So yeah, stuff like that. You can get down down forward two or so. What am I doing? Down forward two, right? It's a good check as well. You can go into SE, right? So yeah, if they, if they start respecting you, um, you can now start going low, right? Stuff like down back four, forward forward for two. I was blocked there. You can go for orbital, right? You can bait them, like, you know, fake them out and go for orbital. Yeah, let's mix them up. Boom, right down forward one. Yeah, that's very basic stuff. Basic, basic stuff. And then we go to his 13th frame, which is off standing 2 3, like I said earlier. So something can be like 13th frame or like minus 13. So let's see, Lars, Lars, Lars does not have a minus 13 law. Let's take a look at um, Dragonov, right? Classic Dragonov down 2. One of the most annoying moves in Tekken 8 right now. Uh, but funnily enough, it's not as busted as Tekken 7. It's actually worse than Tekken 7, right? But it's still annoying. So this move right here is regarded as minus 13, right? So when I say minus 13, like I said earlier, in a case where you get off standing or his slowest punisher, like for example, he gets this, right? So in a case where you can get this, you can also get off standing 4. But off standing 4 is not optimal, so you must always use off standing 2 3 in Lazarus' case. So this Punisher, as you can see, also goes into LE. 
So it works exactly like 2 1. Whatever I said on the 2 1 section applies to outstanding 2 3 as well. So if you skip if you skip this section using timestamps, please check out the 2 1 section on how I explain about the options you have, right? So you can go for like the mid or the low. Well, I cancel it, right? To go for like more lows, right? It's crazy. Very, very strong Punisher. And lastly, for his launching Punisher for Crouchers, you have Wow Standing 1, right? So this will launch anything regarded as launch punishable, as a launch punishable law, right? This will be your go-to launcher, Wow Standing 1. So yeah, pretty strong. Gives you some good combo, right? So pretty good. Uh, you know there was a breakable there, I'm stupid. Yeah, anyway, basic combo. So that's basically it, guys. Outstanding 1, launch punishable. His launch punisher, outstanding 2, 3. His 13 frame punisher, and outstanding 4 as his fastest punisher. If something is only jab punishable, you can only get outstanding 4. But if something is launch punishable, you can get outstanding 1. You can get everything else as well. But as usual, you have to be optimal, so you must always get his outstanding 1 punisher. Okay, and lastly, let's talk about lies is with punishment. So... If you're a beginner or just someone unfamiliar with what with punishment means so with punishment is basically punishing someone for throwing out a move in the open or basically throwing out a move and not hitting you for example i've got a drag to do up forward four so if a player throws something in the open right and if you hit them right it's considered as a with punisher right so you basically punish them for throwing out something in the open you've whiffed punished them so with punishment, they've whiffed something in the open, or they've missed something in the open, hence a whiff punish. It can be anything, right? Even jabs like this. So as long as they miss it, this is a whiff punisher. This is a whiff punisher, right? This is a whiff punisher. Any move you land when they miss something in the open can be regarded as a whiff punisher. So whiff punishment basically applies to all of Lars' standing punishment. So every punisher we've talked about to one right forward to four his shoulder right blue bolt all these can also be regarded as with punishers even his well standing punishment as well so you can do something like this right that's a with punisher right because they've missed they've missed it and i punished them because they missed it right so everything applies as a with punisher this, this so this depends mostly on you the player you must see and react to what the opponent throws out in the open but but let just go to you must always be looking to land your back 3-4 because it has the most range, right? Amongst all your punishers, right? But it's slow and it is mid-high. So if you whiff this, it's getting ducked, right? Right, so this is your basic whiff punisher. Right, at close range, you can land your 2-1 like I showed you guys earlier. Even Arc Blast, even better. Arc Blast is one of the best whiff punishers in the game at close range. Right, so use always use that if you can. Uh, blue bolt as well, but you have to be awoke for this one. You have to be very, very aware. You have to be ready. Down back to three is very, very good as well. It's a very good check. Like I told you guys, he has different with 15 frame punishers apart from Arc Blast, which is a launcher. So he has this and this, right? So these are good as with punishers, right? Not optimal, but like if you if you can manage to like land it, or if if it's only what you manage to get. Like I said, it's better than nothing, right? But like I said, you always must try to be optimal. Try to get your launchers, right? Your blue bolts. Give it 2-1, right? 4-2-4. Four, four. So yeah, that's very, very basic, guys. As long as an opponent misses something in the open, throws out a move in the open, if you hit them when they do that, that is regarded as a whiff punisher. Okay, so there you have it, guys. The last punishment guide as simple and basic and straightforward. If you find any difficulties as a beginner, please, please, please don't be afraid to ask or say something in the comment section. I always respond and I'm willing to help you out as much as possible. If this guide can be any better, please, please, I'm encouraging you to tell me in the comment section. All I can do is improve and help you out. At the end of the day, this guide is for you. I'm trying to help you out. Tekken is complicated. It takes a while. So don't beat yourself up if you find yourself having difficulties understanding what i was trying to explain but anyway if you like this video then please check out my other guides including my leroy punishment guide as well gg